JetBlue making a huge move this week with an offer to buy Spirit Airlines for $3.6 billion, just as the low-cost airline was going to tie the knot with Frontier Airlines. So the question naturally, if JetBlue can close the deal, what's next? The CEO, Robin Hayes, joins us now alongside Yahoo Finance's Brian Sazi for this conversation. Robin, it's great to have you on the show. Appreciate you taking the time. You know, a lot of people were looking at that Frontier news and saying low-cost airline, low-cost airline, that makes sense. Why is JetBlue a better fit? Uh, thanks. Uh, thanks. Uh, great to be on the show. And uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, no, we're, we're excited. I mean, um, uh, we've been bringing low fares and great service to customers in the U.S. for 22 years. Uh, a Spirit JetBlue tie-up gives us a real opportunity to create a, a strong national competitor to the large four airlines in the U.S. that we know dominate the landscape uh, and offer a, a low fares and great service. And I think that is what we are uniquely positioned to do. We truly believe customers should not have to choose between a low fare and a great service. They should have both. Robin, is, uh, is the other side of this deal, it would give you some pretty quick access to a, a whole bunch of Airbus orders by Spirit. By my math, Airbus has 126 orders for Airbus aircraft through 2027. Yeah, um, I mean, both Spirit and JetBlue, uh, you know, we have a significant, we're both Airbus customers. Airbus has been a great partner for JetBlue for 22 years now. And, uh, and they're, they're uh, great airplanes in the order book. They're also much more fuel efficient. The airplanes both JetBlue and Spirit have an order are about 20% more fuel efficient. And that's also great uh, given our environmental commitments and our, um, you know, the important uh, work that we have to do as JetBlue in the industry to uh, lower our carbon emissions. And Robin, I want to ask about, you know, what the customer might be observing if this merger ends up going through. I mean, you know, JetBlue is offering very low cost fares. I've never found cheaper fares to LAX. But at the same time, you know, you're offering things in your basic blue fare and your blue fare that you have to pay extra for on Frontier or Spirit. So if there is a merger with this low cost carrier, are you planning on going to that type of model as well or, or sticking by what you're operating with right now? No, we're going to stick by JetBlue. It's what we have today. I mean, uh, we have a, uh, a blue basic fare, which caters for a customer uh, that is very price sensitive. But then we have a blue fare, um, which uh, has a lot more uh, features uh, in it. Uh, and by the way, when you buy our cheapest fare, you still get the most legroom in any US airline. You still get free drinks, free snacks, free TV and free Wi-Fi. Again, you shouldn't have to choose between a low fare and great service. Robin, it's Akiko here. It's great to talk to you today. Obviously, the flip side to this is Frontier, which made that initial bid for Spirit Airlines. They have come out since this news broke, saying that essentially this reduces competition because of that alliance you already have in place, the Northeast Alliance with American Airlines. And I wonder if we can pull up specifically what Frontier has said on that front, because they did put out a statement saying that this just doesn't make sense for the consumer. How do you respond to that? Well, of course, you know, they would say that. I mean, um, I uh, passionately believe that uh, people love flying JetBlue. I know we're not perfect. Uh, we work hard every day to be to be better. Uh, but it's in our DNA and it's been in our DNA for 22 years and we couldn't have been successful in New York without it, that low fares and great service, they should go together. And we believe that we can do both and that customers should not have to choose. And by allowing a JetBlue Spirit merger, we can bring more low fares. The other really important fact on this, the Department of Justice talk a lot about the JetBlue effect, the effect that when JetBlue goes into a new market, we lower fares. What is a fact that when we go into a new market and compete with legacy airlines, fares come down by more than when an ultra low cost carrier does. So not only can we offer low fares to our customers, a bigger JetBlue would have a more national uh, opportunity to bring low fares down across the board. And that's exactly what we're going to do. Look at the fares, uh, what's happened to fares to London Heathrow when we started flying from JFK. Look what's happened on fares between markets like Boston and LaGuardia when we started flying the shuttle. There are endless examples of how JetBlue has disrupted the industry. And by being bigger, uh, we can do even more of that. Robin, uh, should some should this deal come, uh, should, a, should this deal actually happen, you would have close to, I believe, 50% of the key Fort Lauderdale market. What do you say to regulators as they dig in here and, and see a stat like that? How do you appease their concerns? Well, again, when we think about Fort Lauderdale, you know, you, you have to think about the uh, greater South Florida 
uh, area. And, uh, you know, we, we absolutely recognize that there may be one or two areas where, um, you know, a combination of JetBlue and Spirit, um, um, you know, uh, have a, a, larger, a, a larger share. Um, and we've always been, uh, you know, we've always been very pro competition. Now, what I would say is that there is access into Fort Lauderdale Airport. Other airlines could add service there uh, at any time. Uh, and so there's always opportunities to resolve those one off issues uh, when you see them. But at a national level across the country, a bigger JetBlue is profoundly good and better for competition than a Spirit and Frontier combination. Robin, high, high fuel price is something that every airline across the board is facing right now. You've already reduced capacity, temporarily suspended some of the flights or the routes, I should say. Are you considering additional cuts given where oil is today? Yes, you know, we, um, it's a great question. You know, we have reduced our May uh, capacity down by about 8% on uh, what we originally uh, intended. Uh, and uh, we're looking very closely at the, uh, at the summer as well. And, um, you know, it's likely that we're going to continue to see uh, capacity reductions uh, through the summer. Um, you know, we, um, we said this at uh, a JP Morgan conference we were at back in uh, March. And uh, it's not just higher fuel prices, but it's also to um, reduce some of the operational stress. You know, everywhere you look at the moment, um, there's a lot of stress in the system. There's some staffing issues. Uh, and by just bringing capacity down, you know, we can take some, uh, we can take some pressure off uh, and give us a better chance of uh, operating reliably through the summer. Robin, uh, you pay, JetBlue pays their pilots about 13% more on average than the team over at Spirit. If this deal happens, would you close that gap? Well, uh, so what, what happens in, a, in any merger is that you, the, uh, you'd have to integrate the pilots into a new common system, so it will change. Uh, but it's, you can't just look at the pay rates. You have to look at the work rules as well. Uh, and uh, actually, you know, if you um, uh, if you combine work rules and combine pay rates, that's when you have the most uh, efficiency. What I would say is there is a significant pilot shortage occurring in the U.S. and the pilot pay rates, the pilot rates that you're seeing at every airline will continue uh, to go up. JetBlue CEO Robin Hayes, appreciate the time today. Hope to have you back on the show again soon. And our thanks to Brian Sazi as well.